everyone in today's video I'll be showing you guys a very popular Filipino dessert called halo halo and halo halo is a super sweet and super refreshing dessert to eat especially during the summertime and on a hot day like today today is currently 96 degrees Fahrenheit in the Pacific Northwest and it is hot so I'm gonna show you guys how to make halo halo because you know it's a dessert that won't disappoint during a hot Day. So I'll show you guys how to make it today. It's gonna to be an extra long video just because I'll be showing you how to make ube jam, ube ice cream, and leche flan. So if you guys want to learn how to make it, then stay tuned and do let me know what you like to add into your halo halo or if you ever had halo halo before, how you like to eat it and how you like to make it. I do want to know and I'm always curious. And I hope you guys stay cool wherever you are in the world. So let's go ahead and start making some delicious halo halo. Let's go. Okay, so the things I want to do beforehand is make my ube ice cream and also to freeze my coconut water to do the actual shave ice. So here the shave ice maker actually came with two of the frozen container that we can actually freeze the water or whatever you want to do it with. And to this, I'm going to go ahead and put some coconut water and freeze it. I know I'm being a little extra, but you guys can definitely just use water. But I'm going to use coconut water because I have it handy and I think the coconut flavor will go really, really, really well in the dessert. So yeah, we can go in and Add in the water. Don't fill it all the way too high because it is going to expand in the freezer as well. All right, so we are going to go ahead and stick these in the freezer and let it freeze overnight. And then we can go ahead and use our shave ice machine and um, shave it up. I'm so excited, oh my gosh. So the next three things we're gonna be doing is the ube jam. We're also gonna be making some ube ice cream and some leche flan. So these three things you guys either can make it yourself, which I'm doing, I'm gonna show you guys how to do it, or you can also already buy them at the Asian grocery store if you don't wanna take the labor um, to do it or the time to do it. But anyways, I'll show you guys how to make the ube jam right now. I do want to note that the ube jam that we'll be using later in the video will be a little bit different because I use my mom's homegrown ube plants that she planted in her garden. So it's going to be a lot more purple and uh, consistency is going to be a little bit more different. But for this version, I'll show you guys how to make it using the frozen ube that you can find at your local Asian grocery store if you don't have access to fresh ube. The consistency might be a little bit different and the color might not be as bright but it still tastes as good as the one that I made using the fresh ube. So the ube jam, I have a panner. You guys can definitely cook the jam in a pot. I just find it easier um, to thicken it in a pan just because it's wider and helps evaporate the moisture. But what we're gonna be adding in here is some grated yams. So this is some grated ube. These are the purple one. If you guys turn this around, it's purple. So you guys can see nice and purple here. This is the ube purple sweet potato version one here. So you guys can find this usually at the frozen section in your local Asian grocery market. If you guys have access to fresh ube, then that works just as well. You might just have to cook it before you use it up. But this is already uh, mashed up and grated and ready to use, cooked and frozen, so nice and perfect. So we're gonna use about um, a whole pound of this, so one whole bag of this to make the jam. Go ahead and add all of that into the pan. And then we're gonna add in some sugar. So this is about half a cup of sugar. We're gonna add in a whole can of evaporated milk. This is a, let's see, this is a 12 ounce can of evaporated milk in here. Let's go ahead and add in some salt as well. And then we'll add in some condensed milk. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna turn on the heat and we're gonna cook this down. We're basically gonna reduce this so it becomes a nice thick paste. So they do sell already pre-made ube jam if you guys don't want to make your own ube jam or like take the time to make it yourself. So 
whatever you prefer it's really up to you i just want to show you guys how to make it uh, for those who were interested in learning how to make some ube jam so i'm just going to continue cooking this and reducing this just keep an eye on it stirring it so that it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan and then we'll see how it is we'll come back in quite a few minutes so it's been a good 15 minutes of cooking this it's um i've been cooking it on like medium heat shouldn't be so high if it's too high it's gonna stick on the bottom you're gonna might burn it so this is one of the reasons why i like to use a non-stick pan if you guys have a non-stick pot you can definitely use that too but if you guys use a non-stick pan it really helps so that it doesn't scorch on the bottom you guys can tell where it sticks because it's so sweet and there's so much starch in here so at this point this is the consistency that i like pretty much falls nicely like this and it's quite thick now you guys can see pretty thick so the more you let this cool the thicker it's gonna get so at this point I'm gonna stop here turn off the heat and this is pretty good so the color is not really the color I like so I'm gonna go ahead and add some ube extract in there or ube coloring in there so that we can actually make this a little bit more brighter but again, if you guys want this texture to be more smooth, go ahead and put it through a food processor to make it even smoother. But I kind of like it chunky just because putting it in the ice cream, I kind of like that chunk of the ube in there. So I'm going to leave it a little chunky. But again, if you guys want it smooth, just put it through the food processor. All right, so I have some ube flavoring here that I'm going to add. This is just for the color and to give it a little bit more ube flavor. But you guys can find this at most Asian grocery store would have it. But you can also get it online. Just type it in. So I'm going to add a few drops in there or about, I don't know, a quarter of a teaspoon. Doesn't need much because it's pretty dark. So I'm going to add as I go, just to make sure it's okay. Okay, let's go ahead and stir this up. See how it's getting darker already? Just a little bit makes a huge difference. All right, so while this is still hot, the last thing we're going to be adding is some butter. I'm going to add about three tablespoons of butter. And the butter is going to give it a really nice shine. There's some fats to it as well. Okay, so at this point, the ube jam is pretty much done. I'm going to go ahead and store it um, in an airtight container, put some film wrap on top of it, and then stick it in the fridge while it's cooling. We can go ahead and do the leche flan because I want this to cool before we start doing the ice cream. Uh, let's go ahead and show you guys how to make the leche flan. So the next thing I want to do is make my leche flan. So before I start melting the sugar to get it caramelized, uh, I want to make sure I have my ramekins ready for cooking the flan in. So whatever ramekins you guys end up using to cook the flan in, make sure you have it ready next to the pan that you're cooking the caramelized sugar in. So in a pretty good nonstick pan here, I'm going to go ahead and add in some sugar. I'm doing about a half a cup of sugar and I'm adding some water so about a tablespoon of water to help the sugar start caramelizing go ahead and turn on the heat and you want this on medium high heat to make sure you caramelize the sugar really well and I'm just gonna let that go and start up I'm not gonna stir it if you start stirring it now it's gonna it's gonna start crystallizing and form little clumps so I'm gonna let that go and once I see browning on the outside and I'll just swirl the pan around to evenly um, get the heat distributed. Again, if you guys have certain hot spots on your stove, you know, always rotate your pan around so it gets evenly distributed, which is what I'm doing right now. So anytime you're gonna work with caramelizing sugar, always be careful because it is extremely hot. So please be careful. I don't want you guys to burn yourself. Okay, I have that one tiny spot there, so I'm going to let this go. You guys can see it's starting to brown a little bit here, but I'm going to continue letting this brown up. So I can see it's starting to brown. I'm just going to swirl the pan over my stove top, making sure that they're all nice and distributed here. So at this point, once all the sugar clumps are nice and dissolved, then you can go and stir it. Stir it so it gets heated evenly. So this is good. Turn this off because it's going to continue cooking. So you want a nice caramelized color to it. This is the color you guys want. 
you guys can look. Can't really tell because of the bubbles, but it's nice and caramelized here. And then we are going to go ahead and pour this into the ramekin, doing just enough to coat the bottom, about like a tablespoon or so. Same with the other one. All right, that's good. We're gonna let that cool uh, while we go ahead and do the custard. Okay, custard time. So I have six egg yolks here. We're going to go ahead and add in some evaporating milk and condensed milk again. Some salt here and a little bit of vanilla extract. Then I'm going to go ahead and mix this up really well to break apart the yolks. Okay, well that's good. I'm going to set this aside. And I have a strainer here with uh, a measuring cup underneath. Go ahead and strain this over a sieve. And this is pretty much it. Okay, let's go ahead and pour this evenly into the ramekins. If you guys want, you can make these even thicker flans, but I'm gonna make them pretty thin so it's easier to eat and cut. Okay, so this is good. Any air bubbles, just tap it down if you want. And then let's go ahead and start steaming these. So I have a steamer here. I'm gonna be steaming the flan today. So I'm gonna place this in my steamer. Okay, let's go ahead and cover this with a towel. And this towel is gonna catch any moisture that evaporates as it goes so that the moisture doesn't um, drip onto the actual flan as it cooks. Place a lid on top and then we're gonna cook this and steam under around 200 degrees Fahrenheit, pretty low heat, um, just to slowly cook the eggs. I don't want it too high or else you're gonna get like air bubbles in there. Um, so pretty low heat for about 30 to 35 minutes or just until it is nice and set. So yeah, we'll come back and see how it is after around 30 minutes. All right, so it's been about 35 minutes of steaming this around 200 degrees to 225 degrees. Depending on the thickness of the flan that you're ending up making, it might take longer. Um, if you make a thinner one, it might take shorter. So it all really depends when it's set. So just keep an eye on it. So to tell when it's nice and cooked, just kind of jiggle it. And it shouldn't be soft. So if it's squishing around, it's not ready yet, but this is pretty set, it's nice and firm. So it's all good. That's it, we're gonna let this cool and then we're ready to use it. We'll just use a paring knife around the edges and then we'll flop it over. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish up the ice cream since the ube jam is nice and cool. You guys can see nice and cooled here. So this ube ice cream requires no ice cream maker. So for the ease of people who don't have an ice cream maker, you know, you can definitely make this at home without an ice cream maker, which is really nice. So in a bowl here, I have some ube jam that we made earlier. Go ahead and add in about, about a cup of that in there as well. And again, we're gonna add some more condensed milk in there. And then I have a little bit of vanilla, some salt as well. And again, some more evaporated milk. <laughs> Never stops with the evaporated milk and condensed milk. Okay, we're going to go ahead and mix this up really well to make sure the ube jam is nice and thin and easier to mix once we add in the heavy cream in it. All right, so since I know I'm gonna add heavy cream in there, the color purple is gonna be a little bit faded. So I'm gonna need to go ahead and add in a few drops of ube in there before I add in the heavy cream because I don't wanna over whip the heavy cream. Mix this up. Okay, so that's good. So at this point, we're gonna add in some whipping heavy cream here that I whipped up to pretty soft peaks. You guys can look, it's pretty soft peaks here. So the reason why I'm doing soft peaks is just to incorporate some air. Make sure you whip it up so you can incorporate some air in here so the ice cream is nice and light. Go ahead and add that into the mixture. I'm using heavy whipping cream, not whipping cream. Okay, I'm gonna use a spatula to fold this in because the whisk will incorporate even more air in there. So I'm just gonna use a spatula to fold in. Okay, so this is good. We're gonna need to go ahead and store this in an airtight container. 
So it's nice and mixed. I'm going to pour this into my tubbleware so I can freeze it. Spread this out nice and even. So go in and free this up. Okay, so let's talk about toppings. There's a variety of different toppings that people like and prefer. Um, these are just the basic ones that I found for me that I prefer to like to eat. And a lot of these toppings, you can definitely find it at your local Asian grocery store. And most of these toppings are typically in jars or also canned in syrup and stuff like that. So usually you'll find it at your local Asian grocery market. Some of the toppings I made myself, which um, includes this. I made my own sweetened uh, red beans just because I find that red beans are a little too sweet for me so I made it myself so that I can control the amount of sweetness there is in here. And then the other topping is um, actually these two here actually. These are palm seeds and these are colored red here and green and you guys can typically find it like clear color but these are the colored ones. Um, that they come in a, usually a jar. We're gonna use these two colors today. And then I'm also gonna use some cornflakes today. Typically, um, I think Hollow Hollow, some people put like corn puffs on top of it, but we're gonna use corn um, flakes today because I like the texture of it. So I'm gonna use that as well. And then I have some slice of coconut meat here, thinly slice. So here is the ube jam that we made earlier using the fresh ube from the garden. You can tell the color is a lot brighter and the consistency is a little bit more different. Um, but this is what it looks like. And then here's the leche flan that we made earlier. It's nice and cooled. Just make sure to flip it over so you can be able to use it. And it's beautiful and glossy, so good. I cut it into smaller pieces so we can actually use it as a garnish and top it up. We also have some canned jackfruit here. You guys can use the fresh ones, really up to you. And then the last topping I have here is, these are like coconut gels. And they're just really fun texture, um, kind of chewy. These come in different colors too. Sometimes you'll find it in red. But yeah, other than that, we also have the ube ice cream. And then we have the, we also have condensed milk to top it off with and also evaporated milk. And then we just need to shave the ice. Like I said, you guys can definitely choose and buy whatever toppings you prefer. I like to buy the toppings separately so people can actually choose which one they like. Um, there is a jar at the grocery store that sells like all the toppings in there. It does say hollow hollow toppings and it has all of most of everything that you would typically find in hollow hollow. So yeah, we're gonna use all these toppings today. Let's go ahead and put these into our glass cup and then we can start shaving the ice and finish it off. So basically what we're going to do here is I have a cup that I'm going to serve it with. You guys can definitely use a bowl or a parfait glass cup, whatever you guys prefer. I'm going to use a little cup today. And basically we're just going to add the toppings in there. You guys can add as much as you want. I'm not going to add too much because my cup's not going to fit that much in there. So I'm going to go ahead and add all the toppings that I like in there. So I'm going to add about a spoonful of almost everything. Some jackfruit in here. I'm going to go in with the red palm seeds, a little bit of the red beans. You guys can definitely use the white um, kidney beans as well. I don't really like those, so I'm just going to use the red beans today. A little bit of coconut, some coconut gel, just a little bit. And I have some the ube jam here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scoop this on the side like this. And I'm just gonna place it on the side and scrape it on the side of the cup like that. And then when we mix it, it's just gonna mix in there. After we add all our toppings, we can go ahead and put our shaved ice in there. Okay, so I have my shaved ice machine here today. If you guys don't have a shaved ice machine, you guys can definitely just blend that like crushed ice in a blender in with the evaporating milk and make it into a slushy and then pour it in there. But today I'm gonna use my shaved ice machine just because I have it handy. You guys can definitely buy one online if you guys were interested in buying it. I'm going to add in the frozen ice here. So I'm gonna put this in here, just like that. Close this up and then I'm going to place a bowl underneath here to catch the ice and we're going to press and hold.
Okay, so we're gonna top the ice with some evaporated milk. I mixed in about a fourth of a cup of coconut milk in there too, just because I like the coconut flavor. Uh, but typically, they would just use evaporated milk over the ice. And I also have some sweetened condensed milk just to make the dessert sweeter if you guys prefer. This is totally optional, it's really up to you guys if you guys wanna make the hollow hollow sweeter. But all the toppings are already so sweet. I prefer to add a sweetened condensed milk at the end once it's all mixed just so you can adjust the sweetness to it. But yeah, let's go ahead and top it off. So here is the shaved coconut water here. And we can go ahead and add this in there. And I'm gonna go over a little bit to the top just because once you add in the evaporating milk in there, it's gonna get dense down. Right. And then I put the uh, evaporating milk in a squeeze bottle here just so it's easier for me to actually pour it over and not go over the cup. So I'm going to go ahead and pour the evaporating milk over this ice. That's good. Alright, so now we can go ahead and add in the ube ice cream. So here is the ube ice cream that we made earlier. I only froze it for five hours or just firm enough for you to be able to be able to scoop it nice and smoothly. If you notice that the ice cream is a little bit too hard, you can let it sit for a good 15 minutes in room temperature until it is nice and soft for you to be able to scoop it. Super, super pretty. Look at that. So I'm just going to go ahead and scoop. A scoop of this. Place a scoop on top here. And then we're gonna top this off with the leche flan on here. And basically the last thing we're gonna do is add the uh, rice puff or you can use cornflakes whatever you guys like just for texture on top and that's pretty much it we're gonna mix all of this together and then we can eat it up because hollow hollow just means mix mix so we're gonna mix this up and enjoy it and that's about it super easy huh Mix, mix. I like to keep the ube ice cream on top and I don't really like to mix it in with the um, evaporating milk just because I like to scoop and eat as I go. So it's really up to you guys how you guys like to eat it. Same with the uh, leche flan. I like to scoop and eat the ice as I go. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and give it a try. So I'm just gonna add a teensy bit of condensed milk on top. For the condensed milk lovers, this one's for you guys. <laughs> 